Welcome back to Portable Universe. I'm your host, David Witham, and I've got Greg Eicher in the studio today. Greetings. How you doing? Great, man. Greg, I consider you something of a renaissance man, and that's why I brought you here today. So what are we going to do? Oh, action-packed show today, man. We're going to start off, we're going to build something, then we're going to cook something, and then we're going to have a little taste. Excellent. Well, yes, indeed. Let's get right to it. Let's build something. All right, baby. Okay, here we are in the shed. We're in the shed, in the work shed. Uh, today we're going to make some picture frames. All right. So uh, check this out. 85 cents for this, what's called a furring strip. This is for putting up paneling and whatnot. Why did they call it a furring strip? Because that's what it's fur. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and let me show you a couple things I did to it to get it ready. To get right. it to this point, we did two things. We used this thing here called the router. And it's a big drill motor. And we used this bit here to like... Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, sure. Ferret, ferret out this little rabbit hole. And so this rabbit hole is where, that's where the, the frame and the glass and the mat and everything go in that little okay. strip. And then to round over the edges, I use the router with a round over bit. So it rounded over this edge and uh, that edge. So we're happening here. So first we got the rabbit, which is here. That's where the glass and the picture go. And then we rounded over the edges so it looked cool. To make it look real purdy. It looked real purdy. <laughs> so now, Dave, you'll be my assistant. I'll try. So uh, we're going to fire up the miter saw here. All right. And uh, so we're going to cut 45 degree angles in this, in this here molding that we've made. To so, make a picture frame. To make a picture frame. All right. Well, okay, you ready, guys? Here we go. <laughs> this is the cool part. Okay, now we'll... Uh, We'll make a mark here, and you always go from the outside edge, so we'll go, we'll cut our small pieces first. So we'll go six inches. All right. So now we'll turn it back around. Oh, looky there. 45 the other way. Lock her down. Then we'll get our saw right on that little mark. And ready to go again. Go. That's quite a sound. So there's our first piece of molding. So there we have it. Now we got to turn this saw back around to make our outside cut. Okay. Get it right over there. We'll make our cut and measure again. Okay. One more time. Outside edge. Outside edge. So six inches. Boom. Now, why are you making these frames, Greg? Because everybody's got way too many pictures and not enough frames. Uh -huh. So for 85 cents and a little bit of sawdust, you can get a whole ton of frames. All right. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, get it right there on the mark. That looks pretty good. All right, and then we fire it up one more time. All right. Okay. Looks just like the other one. Identical pieces. Isn't that something? Well, they're close enough. Oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to the fine. It's, we'll fix know, it in the mix. We'll okay. fix it in the mix. Okay, now let's cut. <laughs> so we got a couple more cuts to make here. Now, the thing about the furring strip is it's not a perfect piece of wood. Uh -huh. So we're going to whack off all the imperfections here. See, this part is not hip. No, that's not good. No, it's not. Preserving your precious family memories. Oh, yeah, family memories. And, okay, so here, stand him up on its end. All right. All right, my lovely assistant. So you measure okay. again, pinpoint accuracy. Oops. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, let me, okay, there it is. Beautiful. Okay, then we run the saw back the other way. Lock her down. And I don't know if you've noticed, but our piece of wood is getting shorter. It is. It's much easier to handle at this point. Oh, yes, much. So we eyeball it down there on the tooth. Ta-da. And we'll turn the saw back the other way. A rectagonal. Rectagonal. <laughs> rectagonal. As opposed to a rectangular. Now here's a little, little piece of insider information. To we'll make those pieces, way. make these pieces exactly the same. We'll go this way. All right. All right. Now we're business. So we're almost done. We're almost done with the cutting phase. Then we're going to use another tool. 
clamp them together. Ah. Now, are you going to glue these frames together or are you going to nail them together? I'm going to glue and nail. Because you never know, you just don't know how much, you know, stress a picture frame can stand. It, you know, it might be one of the rough wall in your hallway that gets bumped and need a strong piece of frame. Well, there we go. All right, there's our four pieces. And they go together in the clamp like this. And we'll be nailing. Look at that. You bet. Looks just like downtown. All right, downtown. So let's get this guy off of here. Okay. And first, the time you move these monsters around, you got to unplug them. All righty. All righty. Here, I'll set this on the floor over here. Here. All right. All right, I'm back. Now, let's see. Are these, do these need to be shaped up? Well, more or less. Okay. Now, we'll take them and put them in this little clamp here and meet them up like that. And we'll take one side and clamp it down. And this side will get it close. Now, if you could be so kind as to hand me the glue over there. The glue. The glue and the drill. Elmer's? Elmer's. The drill. This is Elmer's Makita. Carpenter. Makita. Elmer's Carpenter wood glue. It's for exterior use, and I like it because it's waterproof, and it's really, really strong. So we smear this on both ends of it. Mm -hmm. Get a good schmear. Good schmear is important. Oh yeah, with bagels too. Look at that. So we crank it down in there. And we want to put the uh, screw holes on the top. Oh, yeah. So we'll go ahead and run one in here. As you can tell, it's a really sharp. Now I need the little tack hammer and a nail, please. Tack hammer. All right. This is the stuff I'm good at, just finding the tools. You're very good at it. Using the tools, now that's a whole other thing. You don't want me close. And there's a little nail set, that black thing there, too. I, I did know what a nail set was. Okay, so I'm you not... take, take this guy, whack it in there. We'll put some wood putty in this part here. And I need another screw or another nail. So just for grins, We'll put another one in here for additional strength, as this is such a gigantic it's, Well, like I said, there's a lot of pressure, a lot, lot of stress. stress, yeah. That's the problem with today's world, there's just too much stress. Too much stress, even on the pictures. Something innocuous and harmless is a picture. So there we go. Now, what I like to do is take both of these and let the glue set up for a minute. So we'll just, we'll join the other two sides together. But there All you right. go. There's half a picture frame. Wonderful. Very cool. So we'll go about it the same way. Set these guys in here like this. And, ta -ta -ta. and let's see, that one's a little squirrely. Okay, cool. And we'll clamp one side down, apply the glue, smear on both ends. And there we go. Now, I made a very large picture frame for a friend of mine. It was four feet by three feet. A large picture frame when I put a uh, backing on it and a cork board, so she had a big spot to nail her pictures up there. Now, do you run into any problems the bigger the frame gets? Or is it yeah, I had to do a, a quite a good bit of construction there to keep it from falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, you give something to somebody for Christmas and it falls apart before Easter, it's really a drag. That's not a good reflection on Run the nail in there, the other nail. Boy, you're, you're right on top I'm quick, of it. I'm quick. Quick, baby. Okay, then we hit it with the nail set one time. So you hit it with the nail set, it puts it down in there so you have actual, uh, uh, a little space to put your wood putty in mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look too tacky. Well, Lord knows. <laughs> There's enough tack in this world. Look at that, two halves. Two halves. Make a hole. The hole. Look at that. All right, so we'll stick these in here like this. There again, kind of get them lined up. And this is where you really find out <laughs> if you have the pieces that are the same Down size. Because, yeah, 
we might we might have a little discrepancy down here at this bottom end, but well, you know, my carpentry uh, skills tell me that uh, when in doubt, you should force it. That's exactly what we're going to do today, Dave. <laughs> we, yes, we are. We have, we have the opportunity, and I want to, you know, show all the warts and all kind of construction here. Well, you know, life is like that. Life isn't perfect, so we want to see those warts, Greg. Okay. Because believe me, the warts add character. Well, that's why we're using a furring strip because it has. <laughs> Because it has plenty it's of character. It's really a character. It's an 85 cent piece of wood. and So. There you have it. Okay. So now we'll do the same procedure. Oh, now let's see. What we've done is we put the screws or the nails in the top. The top and the bottom of the picture will go this way uh -huh. so you don't see them. Very important. <laughs> Ever the aesthetician. <clears throat> and we'll run another hole in there. I mean, I have the nail, please. Oh, two nails. Yeah, with the glue and the nails, this thing is never coming apart. Sometimes when you put the glass and the um, mat and everything in there, it tends to put a little stress on it. What you're saying is the picture is going to deteriorate before the frame will. Yes, that's it. Well, that's confidence in construction. <laughs> well, I build everything as if it's going to war. It's got to, <laughs> got to stand up. We got to take the heat. Okay, okay, now here, see, we have a little minor discrepancy. There's some warts here. I yeah, there's there's one of the warts. See, one piece is a little longer than the other one, but since the glue is not set up, we can just jam bone. There we go. A little squirt of glue. glue. Squirt of glue. And the same procedure. That's a good thing. That's something to be said for clamps there. Uh, well, I dig this clamp. This is, this was not that expensive either. This little clamp was, you can't. I've ruined a couple. You can't crank them down too hard. It's just aluminum. So, uh oh. Have to. So, here's the warts part. You stick it in there and really clamp it down. There you go. Then you can draw the sides up. And hopefully, before one of the other sides gives way. Indeed. Oops. There we go. And the nails, the nail. please. So in just a few minutes, you got this. Uh, of course, a little sanding would have to be done. Yeah, we'll leave the finish work for later. This is exhausting. Oh, I know. It's time for a little taste. I think you're right. And there we have it. Greg, you're amazing. In just a few short minutes, a picture frame. There once was nothing. Once was a furring strip. There once was a furring strip. Now. The picture frame. Check the it out. The big picture. Yeah, six by eight. So there we Preserve are. your precious memories. Yeah, indeed. You could stick two uh, five by sevens in there. If you kind of trimmed them off. There All right. Go. All right. Let's go eat. All right. Thanks. Yeah, man. Mixing up my first martini. All right. Time to have a little taste. Look at that portion of the show. We're going to have the tasting portion. Uh, Dave is uh, mixing up the uh, first element of preparing a nice dinner, a martini to have. While you're cooking tonight, we're going to cook, uh, cook these little sliced fresh turkeys. And uh, we're going to make turkey piccata. It's like a veal piccata, but we're using turkey instead. So first we get the pan hot, throw in some olive oil here to uh, brown our turkey breasts. And then we'll take the little turkey breasts here and, uh, and hopefully we can get them in the skillet. They're a little stuck. Aren't They're a little they? stuck. Well, that's the beauty of live that's, TV. That's the beauty of live TV. And, uh, you know, this turkey wasn't going without a fight either. <laughs> Indeed. It's Indeed. gone past the grave. <laughs> okay, here we go. We got our turkey breast. Now, one thing you got to remember when you're dredging these in the flour, seasoned flour, a little pepper, a little salt, and a cup of flour. So you stick them in here and you dredge them, and you only got to stick one hand in there because your hand's going to look like that. And you stick it straight away in the oil here. Beautiful. Oh, it's cooking. It's cooking, man. Woo. Never done this in a skillet before, so we'll turn it up just yeah, a hair. Turn it up. Let's get that going. Get this baby cooking. And then we're going to make an in-the-pan sauce, basically, with the same stuff. We're going to let the turkey cook in here. And then we're going to take uh, butter, capers, and white wine and uh, put it in the skillet and reduce it a little bit and, uh, and make the sauce. And what I uh, highly recommend for this recipe is cheap white wine. Indeed. I think that's probably the best. 
cheap white wine, which is uh, available locally here in Long Beach. Yes, we picked it up this afternoon. Yes, it, yeah. I think they uh, decanted that this afternoon as well. <laughs> Indeed, I think they might have picked the grapes yesterday. <clears throat> so, how are we doing over there, Martini Man? Well, it's right here. I think we need to have a little toast to uh, having a little taste. Having a little taste? Cheers. Cheers. To good living. Good living. Well, that's fine. Oh, that's good, yeah. That's fine. I've never had a martini that's... before, so I'm going into uncharted territory here. Well, martini is a beautiful thing. Must be served absolutely chilled with a good quality olive. These guys come from the uh, Santa Barbara Olive Company, which I dig. Ah. What's the olive? I mean, what's the, what's the importance of this olive? Um, Does it help the flavor? I or? think it goes back to the Druids, where the first, that's why the uh, Stonehenge was built, mm. uh, in praise that's of the a, olive. Mm -hmm. It was a circle mm -hmm. like an olive. <laughs> And, God, I never um, thought of that. And, and yeah, and instead of uh, the little... There was a pit in the middle? Uh, yeah, the pit in the middle, and instead of the skewers, they uh, put the little pieces on top. Uh -huh. so, you know, just to finish it off, so... That's what I mean about you. You're a Renaissance man. Well, here we go. So we're getting these cooking, and it'll just take just a minute to get them brown. And uh, the skillet's not quite hot enough, but we're going to have lunch in a minute, man. It's going to be really cool. And to uh, my favorite company for the uh, turkey piccata, little piece of broccoli. So we'll mm -hmm. let those cook for a minute and come back and uh, we'll make the sauce. Groovy. Groovy. Mmm, boy, that smells good, Greg. It smells beautiful, baby. Now, if you check this out, we got our, our turkeys cooked. So I'm just gonna take them out of their pan. And I said before, we were gonna make the sauce in the pan. So use those same wonderful juices that we had from the um, the turkey and the flour. The flour helps thicken up the sauce. And uh, I need the flour for the. Uh... Yeah, those are beautiful. So the sauce doesn't take long. So what we do first, is we put in a little butter here. Butter also helps thicken it up, but it just tastes good too. Come on out of there. Ta da! Okay, put a little butter in there. And we take our capers and throw them into a little caper juice. Never hurt anybody. Mm -mm. I love capers. And then we got some lemon juice. Ah. I like to abuse my lemon before I use it. It makes all the juice come out. And there we go. Yes. We put, the, put all the lemon juice in there we got. It smells great. Sure so does. now, right before it starts burning, we add cheap white wine. Mm -hmm. It's called deglazing the pan, so we put some wine in there like this. Well, it doesn't, doesn't smell bad for cheap white wine. Hey. Yeah, you it was perfect. Was brewed yesterday? Brewed yesterday. So we swizzle that around and add a little more black pepper. And in just a few minutes, a little saucies. You know what, Dave? Yes? You could hand me the broccoli. We steamed some broccoli to accompany this dish. And you could take the lovely tongs here uh, and uh, put them on our plate. Hey, what we do that, that I can handle. Okay, man, you are a whiz. So this recipe looks like something even I could do. Yeah, right. you could do this with fish or with veal. It's veal piccata is where I got the idea. Mm -hmm. And then, um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, just make a simple bare blanc sauce. This is just butter and white wine and mm -hmm. the few pan drippings, and you're there. It's, yeah. it's very happening. You could do that with tofu for vegetarians? I would imagine. I haven't experimented with tofu. Mm -hmm. With tofu, I like, I like marinating it and searing yeah, it. Yeah, you've got to give it some flavor. Yeah, I, I marinate it really. I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about. You do, man. No, you're, oh, you're an eater. Hardly. I'm an you're eater. Yes, I'm not a cooker. Everybody who eats knows what they dig. So a couple oh. of lemon slices. Look at that. It's beautiful. We got, we got lunch for, the, for everybody. Beautiful. Yeah. And this thing How's is... How's that sauce coming? Sauce is looking beautiful. It's like, like I said, I've never cooked it in a, in a uh, fry oh, pan in before. An electric, electric skillet. Yeah. I usually oh. do it over gas. So I think we're happening. So here we go. The sauce is going on. So we'll turn this guy off. For safety's sake. Unplug it. Come on, baby. Talk to me. There we go. And then we'll just put the sauce on the old-fashioned way. It's like we're camping or something. We're camping. There okay. we go. Yeah. And the sauce. So I'll pour the sauce out and then scrape the capers on there. Uh -huh. So this is happening. Look at that. That's yeah. Cool. Let's get the capers on there. All righty. And some capers. Beautimous. Look at that. There we are. There you have it, turkey piccata. A toast to turkey piccata. Cheers. Let's eat. Let's eat. 
that, so. Man, I'm starving. I'm starving. Let's eat. Cheers. Let's click. Do it for too. Well, it's not bad for cheap white wine. Yeah, cheap white wine. Not bad. Thin board in there. Well, let's check out the uh, piccata here. All right. These guys aren't bad. Yeah, you know, you think they took private lessons? They, well, they... I don't know. The bass player definitely, I don't know about the piano players. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure about the uh, wardrobe either. I know. Quarter I should have Well, cutting edge, you know. It's, uh, you know, this is Hollywood. I like to get the pan a touch hotter so it gets a little more kind of seared, seared um, smoky flavor on the outside, but yeah, it's definitely happening. Taste that white wine in there. Mm hmm. The paper's giving it a nice, uh, nice little edge. And you know, man, if you don't rinse them, they're really sharp. So I, I rinse these definitely. Rinse them, you know, pour them in a strainer and rinse them off pretty good. And what have we got to do is do a nice finish on this. Ah, here we go. Man, steamed broccoli is a perfect compliment for this. Oh yeah, both color-wise and taste-wise. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful play. It is. I dig the sound of that whirler too, man. Not too many people play those anymore. Universes I've been in. That's probably my favorite. It was self-contained, a lot of variety. Yeah. I mean, it, this band is great. They're really growing on me. Yeah. That piano player seems to be growing. So what's up next for the universe? Until I called you well, a couple of days ago. That's right. I had people booked and oh yeah, they're checking out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be polite and not talk to you so you'd be the first. Well, I don't 
know you're into that, into that ancient history. I know you've been mm-hmm. into that, that thing about olives earlier. That was something I didn't know anything about. Well, Druids are very soul, soulful cats. That's because of their martini drinking. You know, it's like, um, of course, like certain cultures, you know, use certain things to make themselves more aware of the spiritual realm. Yes, the Druids right. used martinis. I mean, a lot of people think that it came from the, you know, New York in the 20s, but, you no. Know, <laughs> well, that, that he was a Druid who did time travel to New York, so not many people know that. But it's only here in the portable universe that you would, you know, find, find, find out such things in those two. So you're going to dig this pool by hand, huh? With a hand trowel. <laughs> nice. Man, you'll be there a minute, aren't you? Well, it's, it's a... Uh, it's a lifelong project, and I feel it's, um, you can't rush something like that. No, timing is important. Mm-hmm. And I'll let it fill up with the natural rainfall we have here in Southern California. Well, the, you know, it should be another thousand years or so before it's actually Exactly, ready. the druids might come back. You never know. You just never know. We may never know. We may never know. Cheers. You guys are getting funky on us now. Mm-hmm. Must be break time. The piano player's sweating like crazy, man. Yeah, Check him out. I don't know what he's sweating for. He's got the gig. He's Yeah, definitely got the gig. I think he leaves his gear here. Mm. Well, thanks for, thanks for the invite to the universe, man. Well, you're welcome anytime, Greg. We'll probably have you back. that kind of pace all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, she's the one who